The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. If you're building, or buying, or selling a home, the real estate crew's got news for you at the real estate house party. With attorney Rick Carter. Real estate house party. Paralegal Kathy Holsthausen. Real estate house party. Come in, have fun. And comedian Tony V. Now, here's real estate attorney Rick Carter. Did, did you just see Gary? I think he was dancing to our music. Gary was dancing Were you the real wiggling? estate house party. Were you going like this? I, th- I thought I saw you do that. That's pretty you funny. Know, you know Gary can break... Um, <laughs> this is where we're going? This is where, he can break bricks with <laughs> his Gary can with his dance, hand. And, oh, and he can listen, also... Gary is a total gentleman, but if I had a problem with him, I would have to lure him in front of a truck. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's a big man. Well, he can break um, how many? Three, Gary? I think it was four. How many can you break in a row? Like How many bricks? bricks. Six. Six. Oh. Now you're showing off. Come oh show my, us your hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> now you're showing off. I tell you, so he's a contractor, I guess? <laughs> no. He's just, right. he's just, like, right, a, put it he's just like a deer devil, oh, I think, yeah. of do sorts. We, do we have to even introduce our guest? We might have to. If you don't know who he is, he's been living Lenny under a Clark. rock. I'm filling in for our good friend Tony V, who's taking his son out to California. Yeah. Put Tony uh, V got robbed in Vegas. You heard that, right? No. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was he was uh, having a nice trip. Him and Gus the pulled back in. window got yeah. smashed. He's literally pulling into uh, twenty minutes. They were there at a Vegas hotel. The Tropicana, I think it was. Yeah, what a dump. Oh, my God. Yeah. Can you they, imagine? They broke in, took a lot of his stuff. Well, yeah. he was moving out there, so you can imagine the yeah. stuff that was... It happened to oh. a friend of mine's son when he was going across the country. They left their cars in the parking lot. People well, looked for that. Well, you, you know what I do? When my wife wants <laughs> stuff thrown out, I put it in the car and just park it in a bad area. Come <laughs> back, it's all gone. Yeah. And then they realize, what have we stole? This is all shit. <laughs> So Which it, is why our show today. This yeah. is what Ed Sullivan wanted yeah. wanted to see what we should call the show. Yeah. We're going to call it Lenny Clark's Helpful Tips today, right? I like well, it. I liked my okay. title better. Yes. I, we're going to yes. talk about yes. shit yes. today. <laughs> and that, that's the first part You both it. have stuff you want to get off your mind. Who should we start with? Kathy. Then? I don't oh. think you should start with me. Oh, I don't boy. think you should start you with really? me. Really? Want to yeah. go right back to Lenny? Okay. Yep. All right. Lenny, yeah. talk about the Me Too movement. Um, I am hearing this. I am hearing this. And we got... Well, I get, you just interrupted him. He was just no, going to no, tell no, a I'm joke. Good. No, 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 no. I'm good. Go ahead. I'm good. He, he wow. just will interrupt you and just keep that, interrupting. Well, I was you. actually interrupting myself. We should talk about Lenny's career today. We usually have Lenny on because he's our buddy. And we don't, well, a lot of people on. don't know a lot of his but shows. But he's going to tell us a story. All right, so we got three things going on. We got Me Too, and then we got to talk about Lenny's yeah. career, and then we got Lenny's so thoughts. So start, like, let's okay. leave it on the one thought process. <laughs> okay. Lenny's I, saying, I don't know what to do uh, with this no. today. Well, yeah, the Me Too movement has uh, has ended some people's careers. Yeah. And I, I am only thankful to God they didn't have cell phones back when I was raging because there could be some trouble. But, uh, but and you, know, you and a lot of other people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and Not just you, Lenny. And it's alleged. It's, it's all alleged. It's alleged. alleged. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, and, and I have the utmost respect for women and I love women. And I, 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 I the Me Too thing, I, really, I find it very uh, disconcerting now when I say, hello to a woman like oh hello oh you look so nice what do you mean by that and I go nothing you're actually a hideous animal and you know <laughs> watch out for this truck you know I mean you try to be, you can't even give a woman a compliment well today. we were at a um, rat like a political rally down um, in the in Manchester a couple of weeks ago and there was a woman there that was like you know raging about something and someone walked up to like a like a um a veteran walked up to her and said, oh, you seem like you need a hug. And she got really offended. She goes, you just triggered me. I've been assaulted. Like, <laughs> oh. where do we end? Have you ever triggered I'm someone? I'm a woman. So this is, where this is, does it end? This is what they're saying now. People at, at the jobs don't even want to shake people's hands because mm-hmm. they think they're going to get uh, triggering. No, oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> Germs. That's no, what no, I think. No, that's of. the least. No, they think they think they're going to trigger the other person. They don't want to get in elevators anymore because they think there's going to be some. Well, you know, I was in management for many years, and towards the trail end of doing that, you had to think about: okay, I can't have an employee meeting one on one anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because right. you know, if you have one with a woman who says something happened, well, right. you need a witness there. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's changed. You know, everything. it's usually, I find it's usually really unattractive women. <laughs> that, 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 that are bothered the most. Only you. Yeah. Yeah. Only you. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, I mean, I don't understand. It, 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 it ruins it for you. Can't you can't talk to people now? You can't say hello. You can't. It's just out of well, control. Well, you can't say Merry Christmas. You have uh, to say Happy Holidays because you don't know how they. You don't even know. You can't refer to someone as a he or a she anymore because you don't know what they identify as. Right. So that's why <laughs> whenever there's a line in the men's room, I will go right into a ladies' room. They go, what are you doing? I go, Elizabeth Warren says I can do it. And they go, oh, oh, oh what do we do now? Well, they, you know what they should do is they should just do uni, unisex bathrooms because it's. we were at a brewery and there was a, two doors. One said he, um, him, mm -hmm. and then the other one said um, he, so he, and then it said the other one said he, she, and handicapped. Mm. And I was standing there and I'm looking and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and all the he's are going into the he and coming out and I'm still <laughs> waiting for the he, she, handicapped. Right. And I said, well, some one of the employees walked by and I said, I think that this is a little bit discriminatory. And she said, well, what do you mean? I go, well, because the he can go into this one or this one. But the she can only go into this one, and I have to share it with the he's and the handicap. That's why you got to go transgender. <laughs> you know, uh, but if I, they had unisex bathrooms, we could all just get in the Don one Doesn't Don Gavin line. have a little bit where he's, he goes to the oh, door and he's trying to match up to the profile? And he does not <laughs> <laughs> he's not sure who, whose well, like profile in, he matches up in with. In the Italian restaurants or a different, yeah, 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 different right, country, exactly. you're like, am I... That one? Mm. Or right, that right, one? Exactly. Or Mexican? Yeah, yes. Uh, Everyone should go to UMass oh, can I Can I say Mexican? Well, well yeah, yeah, I okay. think you can because <laughs> it identifies them. And they're a very proud people. Why? I okay. don't know. But uh, they, no, 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 I, teach, I kid. I kid to all the Mexican people listening to the house party. Um, you know, I, I don't understand. You should know? go to UMass Amherst. Yeah, well, a bathroom was a bathroom. Yeah. You just go in. Well, right. We were all drunk. We didn't right. know. We didn't yeah. care, yeah, right? No, that's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, so everybody should just get drunk and use whatever bathroom they want. That's all right, right, so there's the first tip of the day? Yeah. Yes. Is that a good tip? You want right? to go with that it's one? A good tip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, go for that one. Yeah. You know, Rick, my, my wife is as liberal as they come. Yeah. And yeah. I think even she's had enough when we're looking at a high school program and one particular student wants to be called they for a pronoun. Right. And my wife just got incensed and said, you cannot co-opt a plural pronoun no, there, for an no, individual. That's true. Wow. That's true, I they, didn't even realize it was a plural pronoun. <laughs> yeah. That's how confused well, I no, am. No, you're right. Because the towns are trying to change their, their uh, articles of organization and right. says he or she, they'll put in they and it's just not grammatically correct. But no. what they're doing is just trying to uh, yeah. Appease everybody. I, 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 yeah. I, would li I would like to address the LBGQ, Queen T, <laughs> whatever community, and say, look, we understand. We don't care. Whatever you want, leave us alone. Right. St stop uh, uh, bothering us. You're offending us with your being offended. We don't care. You do what you want. I got my own problems. I'm married. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't care what you do. Go, go for it. Have fun. Right. Enjoy Who life. Cares? Have you yeah. had to change your comedy over the years? Oh God, it's 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 horrible now. I, I, when yeah, we, so, well, because when it's well because you're going to offend somebody in yeah. the room. And now I I tell the people I said did I offend you? Good. Well, I'm offended. It, you being offended. Yeah. I see you're offended and I raise you an offended. Well, Top if, that, you son of a bitch. If you're sensitive, if you're that sensitive, you shouldn't be going to a comedy club, yeah, right? Yeah. Because uh, you guys say anything you want. Well, we, we used to. We, you, I, I used to say whatever I damn well pleased. And talk about sanctuary cities. You can't even have a sanctuary <laughs> stage. You know, yeah. I mean, you used to be able, that was your area. You could get on that stage and say whatever you want, however you want to say You can still seem it. to get away with but a lot more than you most. You can't even I mean, talk about your Weight Watchers joke because you can't call anyone fat anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> but like, but, yeah. You can't talk I about mean, Sweaty Betty anymore? Oh, I love Sweaty Betty. Yeah, I, yeah. I would do her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, know, it, it, you know, it's, it, it's Kathy's just. Kathy's in no mood to hear about it's Sweaty Betty. Just, it's just, uh, it, it, it's gone. I think everyone agrees it's gone too far. Right. I mean, when, you, when you're calling someone a they, I didn't even hear that one. That's yeah. a new one. Yeah, yeah. But, well, that's when you're in trans, transition, when you're, you're going uh, from a he to a she, and you don't know. You know yeah, well, you, you don't, don't want to be identified. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's a difference a they, between right. the operations. There's a lot of dick off of me and an addict to me. And that, that, and your transgender 
transition. Right. Lop the di- what was Lop it? Lop a dick off of me. <laughs> or add a Lop dick to me. Dick off of me. <laughs> or add a dick to me. And it's very, very uh, complex operation. And, uh, I'm Ed sure- Sullivan, our engineer, is writing this down because yeah. he's making copious notes for today's show. But listen, we can't, like, my kids are like early 20s. Yeah. And I can't even, like, there are so many words, some words that they won't let me say. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not going to say them on the ear because they'll kill me. But, like, things. Are they woke? Are your kids woke? <laughs> What's that? Oh, you don't know what woke is? I don't either, but all the millennials use it. What is it? Woke. W-O-K-E. Yeah. They probably are woke. What does that mean, Ed? Lenny, if you don't know what it is, yeah. you ain't woke. There you go. What and is Sullivan it? tell us woke. I, I think it means that you are aware of all of these crazy new terminologies. I think you're right. Do I you think. know the word, like, you know, um, when you say the word gay? Yeah. You're like, that's so gay. Yeah. You remember, we no, you, grew you, up saying that, you right? You can't do that. I can't do that. I can't. There's so many things I can't say in my own house. And I'm like, wait a minute. But this is my house. Ka- <laughs> Kathy, you should get clarification from your kids, though. If two men are having sex in a park, can you say that's so gay or that's not too? <laughs> I don't really know. Well, I, know. I hope they clean up after themselves <laughs> because it, it, the dogs, you have to clean up after your dogs. So, I mean, if you're going to be having sex in a park, I think you should bring a bag for that. Too. Put right. signs on for that. Yeah, that yeah. Too. With the dog signs, huh? My Let's dog. talk about some. I know we're jumping around a little bit. <laughs> a little? A little bit. And so, we hope you we hope you send letters. <laughs> send letters to us. Send them to Lenny. And I will answer <laughs> all of them. I'm not, I'm not answering any letters. Here's our phone number, 555, right? Mm-hmm. 569. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a lot of people, so a lot of people's careers are a little bit different now than you're saying. Because oh, you, you've started, like Rodney Dangerfield, you've worked with Rodney before, oh, right? right? Rodney gave me my first big national And he probably used grade. to say that so gay. Oh, he Rodney was, would Rod- say. Rodney would say whatever he damn well pleased. Right. Yeah. You know? I mean, he was How amazing. would Rodney be able to react to this world? R- Rodney, if you if you noticed uh, when he was on cast and everything, I mean, he, he had no problem adapting to the uh, rigors of the... Um, uh, Federal Trade Commission, you yeah, know, FD, yeah, FDC yeah. on TV, yeah. but his live act, he was unbelievable. Really? And, and oh, and, and George Collin, George Collin had no problem, but the stuff that he did would lay you out. I mean, George this, Collin always wasn't like that, though. He started more on the. Uh, he was very clean. He was he, always clever with the words. And, and he and, was working in Las Vegas, yeah. and they told him you have to be, you know, ultra clean. This was in Vegas years, years ago. And, uh, he said, you know, I'm just sick of it. And they were giving him a bunch of money, and he left. I don't know if it was Caesar's Palace or Bally's. And he went to uh, a hotel that's no longer there now. Well, it's there, but it's a different name. And he did a show at 3 in the morning. And they said, who's going to come to see you at 3 in the morning? Just the type of people I'm looking for. And he took a <laughs> Drunk. Pay, And he sold out every night. Really? And, oh, yeah. George was just brilliant. Did you ever work with George? Oh, yeah. Did oh, you? Oh, God, yeah. We were good. For, I saved. He used to call me up. And I saved every one of his phone messages. Uh, I also That's all right. I do that with you, too. Yeah. Oh, I, I, but I tell you what. Rick, it was you just, whore. How you doing? <laughs> so I don't no. think you can call him a whore anymore, well, Lenny. You know, I, I, I do feel I targeted I, a little bit. I think I have to address him as a man whore. <laughs> No, you know? I don't think you're allowed to call him as a whore because now you're now you're like passing judgment on him. What about, what about a prostitute? Is that acceptable? <laughs> or how about a they whore? <laughs> Ooh, I like that. You <laughs> they whore. But, I, but you know, I, I I feel a lot less offended with a they I, in there. I yeah. use whore as a term of endearment. That's right. Like hi That's honey. Right. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Well, right. Well, well, yeah, I think hi whore is less offensive than hi honey. <laughs> You know? Especially when point. you're talking with a friend. How about high sweet cheeks? Oh, oh my God. No, I don't love go that there. one. Yeah, I I just, don't, now don't. you're just pushing my I, buttons. I know. I you know Hello. Hi there, moist sweet cheeks. Oh, my oh God. God. Yeah, I've never done that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I'd right have to put you on I, our answer I, machine. I, I offend people. Hello, you whores. Just I, leave a message. Cattle our office isn't available right now. I, I offend people just by the way I look at them sometimes. I, why are you looking at me like that? I'm sorry. I'm, we're standing in line, you know, and <laughs> you're six feet from the counter. You know, I hate those people. You're standing in line, big long lines out the door, and you finally get in, and there's a seven-foot gap between the counter <laughs> and the person waiting. And they're on the phone. I go, you walk around. What are you doing? I go, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you're on the phone. Are you going to get in line or what are you going to do? You know? And then while she's arguing with me, two other people go by. I go, this is all your fault. <laughs> Step up, for God's sakes. Step up and order. 
So you can't even be, you can't even comment on someone's, uh, I, I've, I've noticed this too with, with uh, girls, let's throw it your way. If, if you find the person attractive who's saying it to you, even though it's the same exact statement, exactly. you, you like, can live ooh, with it. Yes, you are absolutely right? right. You think I'm hot? If John Bon Jovi says, oh boy. Give me a Kathy Holtz yeah. house, <laughs> You'd be there. You'd be all over. Yeah, that. yeah. Touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Kat. Very good. Yeah. But if a creep said the same exact thing, oh yeah. no, right? Oh, yeah, right. I understand yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. I understand that. So is that another tip for the day? All right. Yeah. All right. You know, yeah. All right. It depends I, on what you look like. I, I, I've never <laughs> considered myself a creepy type guy. However, in high school, uh, a lot of times I would have sex with beautiful women. Uh, because I told them, you know, their boyfriend to dump him or cheat on him. I go, you know, the best way to get back at them, <laughs> bang me. <laughs> they go, you had to have him. You could have anyone as stupid. You did him. I go, yeah, it's my little way of helping out. I was. You were such a nice. Classy. So you were doing yeah. it for the community, yeah, right? I, I was a vengeance bang. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, all right, Ed, Ed Sullivan, Vengeance yes. Bang. No, no, right. no, 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 Ed. No. Not putting that on? Why no. not? Oh, all right. Has it has it been anything you've been able to put on so far? Um, can attractive people get away with saying things ugly people can't say? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. they can. Thank you, Ed. But I think that's been around since the caveman. Right. You know, a good-looking caveman wouldn't have to hit you over the head. <laughs> just show you, drag you home by your hair. He'd just show you his, his club and you go, I'm in. So <laughs> you, you mean like a Neanderthal movie star or something? The okay, Brad Pitt you're of right. the Neanderthals. You're, you're, whatever you want. Let's yeah. go through some of the movies you've been in. Okay. There's something about Mary. How was oh, that? Was that fun? Oh, that, I love was, that, movie. that was one of the most fun experiences I ever had in my life. Really? And as a backstory to that, I went down there. And the Farley brothers were so great. I, I think I was supposed to be the cop, and Sweeney was going to be the fireman. But when we got there, I was so fat, I couldn't get my ass through the window. So oh. I said, Lenny, you be the fireman. And they had to actually take three fireman suits, cut them up, sew them together really? to fit me. Oh, yeah, I was huge. How big and were you then? About 295 pounds, mm -hmm. maybe 310 at the time. I, I have went. a picture of you in your Patriots. Do you remember the, your Patriots shirt? It's like a shirt you have on now, but it's like a... Oh. It was like a tent. Yeah. I, I, think someone's I have a using, picture. I think someone's using it as a sail on their boat now. <laughs> I'm going to find that picture and yeah. send it to oh, you. Yeah, yeah. You're like uh, half of the person oh, yeah. that you were. I actually, I actually, I topped out actually, at three, half. I, yeah. I, I topped out at 388. Wow. And I went down as far as 182. Cause my goal was 188 for an even 200 pounds. And I didn't do the gastric bypass, which I went to do. You tried to do it, right? They my, told you you had to lose weight, right? Yes. Yeah. And I said, well, screw you, you know? Right. And, and then I. It was doesn't make any sense, no, right? No, no. Because I was eating. Like tie up my stomach. That's tie it up. Cut me up. Now, cut, cut me now, like a fish. Now, if you've always had this, like, we're doing psychology today, like an addictive person. Because yes. you, you get into something, you know, you don't drink anymore. No. At all. No. No. When's no, the last no, time you drank? 20, it'll be 23 years. So you just March stopped, 8th. which is amazing. Yeah. Because a lot well, of you. I had help, too. I had people help me. You, know? you and Mike stopped. Right. Right. The same day. Yeah. 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 But That's I was amazing. a very, very naughty boy. I mean, and I, <laughs> you know, I, I remember I was shooting a movie, uh, Two of By Sea, with Dennis Leary and, um, uh, well, it doesn't matter. I can't remember now. But anyway, um, who's the girl in Speed? Beautiful girl, uh, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Her first bomb was this movie, <laughs> and we we made we made an amazing movie. Yeah. But the editing of it ruined the picture. As a matter of fact, the director of that film never worked in this country again. Wow. Because it was Dennis and and Sandra, and the movie was fantastic. It was about a bunch of us robbing uh, homes down in Martha's Vineyard, you know. And we shut up. Well, anyway, I'm driving a cement truck, being pursued by the FBI, and. I'm so drunk that I have the, the cement coming out. <laughs> no. Oh, thing. during the movie yeah. you were drunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, were you so, supposed to be having, were you supposed to be drunk driving in the movie? Or well, yeah, were you, well, yeah, I was, supposed, cement mixer? I was supposed to be drunk, but they didn't realize I was drinking real booze. Oh. So, 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 so the director yeah. comes over. What was the name of this movie? I'll have to Two of by C. Okay, yeah so, yeah. so the director hops up on the, the cement truck and says to me, uh, Lenny, because someone said, I think he's drinking real beer. Because I, I, I went through <laughs> about two cases of beer in the entire Take day. Take 20. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 but so he says, excuse me, mate. 
how many beers does it take for you to get pissed? And I go, oh, I don't get pissed. I'm a happy drunk. And he goes, no, no, no. Drunk, like really drunk, drunk, dangerously drunk. I go, well, we'll have to find out. <laughs> and, 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 and retrospect, I'm driving a giant cement truck. Are you actually around, driving it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around these little roads up Did in- Did you have any uh, background driving cement mixes before? No, no, no. And it, was, it was hysterical. I remember that. But yeah, the movie Were you bomb. supposed to be having the concrete come out the back? Yes. Oh, oh you were? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well- for, we for thought that was an of, after for pot. Well, I think I think <laughs> I think when I, it started by mistake, but it looks so good. And they right liked in, it so yeah. much they said leave that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, uh, was Dennis Leary drinking a bunch at that time too? Um, yes, yes. I tell you why. We went to a we had a party one night, and we're we're going home because we early call time six a.m. in the morning. It's like two in the morning. We got to go back and get some rest. So we're going. I was at a different hotel, and he was at a different hotel. And he left his bottle of Jameson on the front step of this house. And when we were going back in the morning to go to makeup, the bottle was still <laughs> there. It wasn't finished, you know. So, really? Yeah, yeah. That was so you just started drinking again? Uh, well, no. He. Oh. I, one thing about Larry, uh, I never saw him drunk. I mean, he drank like he, he could drink with anyone. He's a skinny uh, dude. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've taken shits bigger than him. He, <laughs> he, he is such a good guy. Oh, thanks but, for that. But he, <laughs> he, 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 when he quit drinking, he he didn't want anyone to know. You know that he. Quit, you know, so I said, all right, I won't tell him. But you know, because I mean, it's that's fine. Then he wrote a book recently, "Why We Don't Suck," and he wrote a whole chapter all about right. me and exposed me that about not drinking. But I don't care who does it. I mean, everyone knows I don't drink. I can't. It's all. Right. It little, may be a blessing that you don't. Little drink, deal I worked Lenny. out with the government. Yeah. I don't right. drink. It's court order, right? Court order. Yeah. Court order. <laughs> yeah. So, but but it, it was. When just, did he stop? He stopped probably about. Nine, nine years ago, maybe. Oh, okay. Nine, ten years ago, yeah. What made you just do it? So you just, that was it, huh? Well, uh, he just said the government. Well, well I, I, I was, well. <laughs> what I, prompted the government to well, say? I was sick and tired of being sick, sick and, and tired. tired. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was taking too much to come back. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. The right. hangovers were unbearable, and then, then it led to the to the coke. And, you know, I mean, I can't ever do this again. Well, well maybe one. Okay, I'm ready to go. Go on, say. And, 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 and the funny thing was, when I quit doing the, the booze and drugs, I had stage fright. Oh, really? Because I had never performed without right. being drunk or high or, oh, or wow. coked up. So you and had to relearn your jokes? I had to relearn my whole my whole persona, persona. Yeah. yeah yeah so i remember the first uh oh, big gig i did high i was straight was uh, uh clean and sober as opposed to straight and yeah. transgender and yeah, whatever yeah. it is uh, <laughs> i was on it was at the hot tin roof on the vineyard and i was driving down there and i was like, oh my god i don't think i can do this so i called ahead and i said listen i'll be there i'm starting to pull in now start to announce me because i figured if they announced me they started going through my intro and i walked through the back door and his area is lonely clock and i walked out and i you i didn't couldn't have a chance freeze. i didn't yeah. have a chance really? to freeze okay and, it, okay. and, I, and then they, they got the right. yeah, first couple of jokes and, and then i went backstage and you went, called oh everybody god. a bunch of whores why don't you laughing at me now <laughs> 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 that probably went over very well no. so <laughs> you had problems uh, um, not drink. You know what? You know what seems like uh, you probably would have had some problems with not problems, but getting cast once you lost all that weight. Yeah, because well, when you were a big guy, you know the big guys are always you know yeah, the John yeah, Candies yeah. of the world. They're yeah. already you know just the humorous persona. You know, I got to meet John Candy. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. I was up in uh Toronto doing a comedy festival, and I was with Mister T. Oh, really? Oh. And we're in a limousine, and Mr. T's <laughs> drinking out of his goblet, you know, his yeah. chalice. Of course you are. And we're, of course we're, you we're walking through the uh, – we're at a, a, a Toronto Argonauts game. I think Flutie was the quarterback for that oh, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He threw for six touchdowns that day. It was amazing. And we're walking down the – you know, the, the, the in the stadium, and everyone's going, Mr. T, Mr. T. And, and, you know, no, no, I was. And it, it's okay. And there's John Candy coming at us. I go, oh, my God. And he walks up to his Lenny Clark, and I go, oh, my God, John, <laughs> you don't know how long I've wanted to meet you. He goes, a big fan. He goes, he goes, you want to come to my booth? I'm in the owner's booth. Uh, I'm with the commissioner. I think he was a 
by like assistant commissioner of the Canadian football yeah, league. Yeah, you're right. Right. So you're right. he goes, You want to meet Gretzky? I said, Yes, I do. He says, I right, don't don't screw around. I said, I won't. <laughs> so we, we walked in, me, Mr. T, John Candy, and Gretzky's front and center, right? And he goes, Wayne, I want you to meet a good buddy of mine. He's a comedian and actor from the from the States. This is Lenny. I said, I said, Wayne Gretzky, what an honor. What a pleasure to meet the second greatest hockey player that ever lived. <laughs> and he slaps me. He goes, Where are you from, Boston? I go, see, he knows John. And it was it was great. It was just great. Did you ever hear the story of Joe Montana with John Candy? So no. Joe, Joe Montana was supposedly a very low-key guy. In the, he was always trying to cal- calm down uh, uh, his players in the huddle, things yeah. like that. So I guess the uh, big, big game, probably the Super Bowl. And uh, guys are tense, guys are tense, and he's, he's huddling everyone up. He goes, hey, is that John Candy in the, st- in the, studio, uh, in the, in the stadium? stadium? <laughs> it's, it's good. So my story of, of, of bringing around was uh, when you, you brought me around, uh, not to screw up. You reminded me when you brought me to meet Tom Brady. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You tell him not to open his mouth? Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you say, shut up, Rick, oh don't say God. anything? This is how a day is with Lenny Clark. I probably said this before. Uh, Lenny and Mike go, you want to go to the Patriots game? I go, yes, I do. Do you want to go down to the field? I go, yes, I do. <laughs> Do you want to meet Tom Brady in the uh, locker room? I go, yes, I do. But you can't say one single yeah, 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 word. Yeah. Uh, I think you said that to Tom. All right. He's just here for the day. Yeah. He, he'll be all right. He he'll be fine. not say anything. <laughs> oh, God. So, Lenny, I've got a question. Yes. Now, this is a story that I need you to confirm yep. or deny. Okay. Is it true that you hold the record for telling the same joke in the same set the most times? <laughs> and this goes back a lot of years, so... The same it, it, joke in the same set? Yes, apparently. According, the Was way it the this, cape joke? The way I this say story yes. goes. I say true. L- and, Lenny kind of forgot that he had told it before and told it three times in total. <laughs> I did that. Yeah, I did, did do that. that. So it is I, true. And I remember where it was. I was in situate. <laughs> I swear to God. And I was doing a, a, a show for Don Gavin. Yeah. Uh, and we had been up for a few days. And <laughs> Gavin's on stage and he's killing, as he always does. And I was trying to b- behave, you know, because Gavin goes, you know, don't don't screw this up. We, we, can, we can come back here more often. I think it was the bell buoy. I don't know. But, but I remember it was situated. So he's bringing me on. And, he, and, and, and I hadn't been drinking that much. And <laughs> that I, I started getting nervous. So I went by. The, the bar, and I took a drink, a sip out of everyone's drink on my way to the stage, and it hit me all at once, <laughs> boom, like a bomb. And I'm up there, and the, the particular joke was, you know how many Mormon. women are Mormon? Yeah, that's that's a, <laughs> that's a true story. That's then. A true Solomon, how do you know that story. one? Story. Oh my God. So what yeah. was the joke? Uh, I said, you know how many women a Mormon man can marry? And 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 the first time they didn't, know, I said thirty. So and I kept going on. I said, "You know how many women a Mormon man can marry?" And they go, and they go thirty. And I go, "You know how many women a Mormon man can marry?" And they go, thirty. I, how do you know that you told us? I said, well, "I'm just checking to see if you're paying attention." But I, I said, "Oh my!" And that was the first time, and one of the only times I ever repeated myself. But it was, it was. Uh, I, the, the crowd, yeah, just, that's they like me anyway. That's funny. Because then I did a whole bunch of other stuff trying to dig out, and, and it, I got I got through it, but, but Gav was so pissed off. And uh, <laughs> then he got even more pissed he off. He was when, probably mad that they thought you were still, still thought you were really funny. Right, yeah. and, then, and then he really got pissed when the owner says, when can we have Lenny back? <laughs> so I went, right. I went back and did a makeup gig, and it, 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 it worked, worked out fine. Yeah. All right, now if we're asking Lenny questions, I got one for you. Because we're used to this going to the comedy shows. The way we want to know how you, did you really need a ride to the Cape? That's what we really <laughs> no. want to know. No. <laughs> no. All right, here's a question. Sorry. Yeah. When, we, when we go to the Boston comedy shows, it's a great formula. And I always thought it was like this all, all across the country. Like if you're the headliner, right. you'll come on sometimes, you act as the host. Oh, well, that was my, that was my invention. All right, that's what I thought. And I'll tell you why. We... At, but not only was I drinking heavy, but I was doing a lot of drugs. And I figured when I was on stage as the headliner, I'd be doing 30, 45 minutes. And that kept me away from right, getting right, high. Right. So you'd have to time it just right or and midway through, say, oh, I need a line. I need a drink. So I'd say, I'm going to host. And they say, you can't host. You're the headliner. I go, let me give it a shot. Let me show you. So I go up, I'd open up, and I'd bring up an act. Now, if the act did... Uh, 
better or worse, it didn't matter. Because if it was great, I could take it to another level. If he, if he brought the show down, I would bring it up and then bring out the next act. And people said, hey, this is working out. Right, right. And Gavin goes, we don't do it like that. And then Gavin says, hey, I really like this. And right, 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 right. And then, of course, I, 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 I made it, uh, I perfected it by doing the open mic night on Wednesday night at the Ding Ho, where, you know, an open mic night, you, you might see 10, 12 people tops. I was putting 30 people on. 30 people oh, on. Yeah. And, and if they oh, suck, that's what Mike told me. He says yeah, you'd get 35 people I, on. I, absolutely. And I'd have a list like this, and I'd get high, and I'd say, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> and if someone came to me, what am I on? i go, now nah, you're at the end of the line. You know? <laughs> and someone said, Lenny, I got a joint. You're up next. <laughs> Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox used to come into the uh, open mic. Kevin next. was the best. He was the greatest guy in the world. He was world. a great guy. He would come in, you know, with his long, flowing oh, hair yeah. and his tennis togs. I mean, and he'd come in with a beautiful, a couple of beautiful girls. He had like a condo table, ringside. You know, people say that table's <laughs> reserved. Yeah, you know, only guy with a reserved table. And so one night, someone gave me a bag, and I, 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 so I go, "You're next." He goes, "I can't go on." I go, "Just do a few minutes till I either get high or puke." And he went up, and he was great. I said, "How'd you?" He, you know, it was great. You come back next week, and that's how he. Started. <laughs> That's awesome. So it was all drug related on on that formula. Formula is that what you're saying? The reason it being yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was drug induced, <laughs> but it it worked out very very well. Uh, now you know why why I don't do that. I I I just rather go on at the end and do my thing. Now if someone. A lot of times you get young comedians. Oh, I'm a headliner. I go really? Okay. Well, you're going last then. Yeah. And then I'll go on and go burn the room down. Go, Have a good time. I'm going home. Yeah. The go, first first time I met Kevin Knox uh, had to be about 20 years ago. We couldn't get you for a show for the real estate brokers. We had it at Meadowbrook Country Club. And we bring Kevin Knox. I, I never met him before. And Mike says, no, oh, I can't get you Lenny today. I'm going to send this guy down, Kevin Knox. I go, is he good? He goes, he's, he's phenomenal. Oh, my God. He comes in with the flowing hair. Oh, yeah. And we had all the all the agents were about 60, 70 years oh, old. Oh, they were all horrified. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you, know, you want to – I got to get my host painted. Well, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, Blow jobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. They were horrified. <laughs> well, you know, I love seeing the reaction. <laughs> what, when, uh, well, I was – when Jimmy Kimmel first came on doing his show, he would have certain guest hosts. And I was one of his guest hosts like three different weeks in a row. Not in a row, but I mean within the early period. And you were just on about a month ago. Too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that was good I, stuff. I, oh, God, I was so happy. Um, so he said, What's up, Lenny? I said, I got a friend of mine, and you know, he's really great. He's never got a break. I said, Can we, can we throw him a bone and put him on the show? And he said, Yes. So we call Kevin and Mike goes, you got to work clean, you know, it's nationwide TV. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they didn't even make him audition. They just brought, really? they brought and, and he, it was great. You he know? Not, he, and and he, he, did, he did fine, you know, I mean, it, it, if he had more time, I think, to think about it, it would have been even better. Yeah, yeah. But, but Jimmy goes, he's your friend, he's on. And, and you know, and then. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, he Very is. Very funny and guy. The only one I know willed away cancer. He had cancer oh, and they took him like six oh, months. Oh, he says, screw you. Yeah, I mean, he was. About seven or eight years. Such a, such a, such a good guy. And he gave back, too. He you did. Know, he, he treated the young kids. You know, see, because when I, when I first came, there was no one. To, to look up to because they were all gone. We we started Boston. It was a, right. Jay Leonard would have left twenty years right. ago. Went to New York, then to L.A. You know, right, right, right. And I mean, I, and I I remember struggling going to New York and having to fight my way through and get on. They put me on last, and I'd blow the room out. And they go, "You can come back next week. Here's ten dollars." I go, "Yeah, I want to, <laughs> I want to pay for my stamps." You know, then I get on a train and go back to Boston. And I said, "If I ever make it, I'm going to help." you know other people coming yep, up yep. Coming, and i did and i helped a lot of people who went on to superstardom oh yeah never turned around yeah never looked back <laughs> yeah, yeah i said yeah. sleep with one eye open you yeah. said because yeah. <laughs> those, di- those days at the ding hole you did like wednesday night <clears throat> yes and you had like don gavin doing a saturday night yeah, no i think don, don did was friday Barry crimmins yeah i did wednesdays I, I think Barry did Thursdays. Don did Friday. Sweeney, oh, Sweeney. did Saturday night. Okay. And then Meanie would come over because then they started Sweeney and Meanie on Wednesday nights. But it didn't affect our show at all. Cause, right. Because right. they, they would come over after their show. And go, the Wednesday night was one of the most packed nights of the week 
every every week. People still talk about you the know, Ding Ho because, days. Well, you know, we started charging like $2, then $5. That was $15 for an open mic night show on a Wednesday night. Mm. Sold out. Wow. Yeah. You know, and we, you know, we had a liquor license till one. Sometimes we'd be there at 2 15 to come nice. coming. Lenny, you got to go. You want to you want to get up and give it a try? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I guess we're going to, we might have to go. Yeah, we have to we go. We have a lot of real estate oh my stories God. today. All right. Well, listen, if you're if you're thinking of doing a real estate deal, <laughs> call the Carter Law Firm <laughs> and, and speak with Kathy. And no, 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 no. I'm not answering the phone. <laughs> well, call Rick. Email Kathy. No, no, no. Not Text answering Kathy. email. No. Nope. Give, give out her cell phone and yeah. no call. Send her some flowers. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Tell how hot she is <laughs> and leave a return number. If you're lucky, you'll get a call. <laughs> but buy a house and, and have some fun and then try to flip it and have some, you know, get a TV show. Listen with the terms. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, right. you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm here with two legends today. Kathy Holtz, I was a paralegal yeah. extraordinaire, and Lenny Clark. Thank you, Ricky. The, the I, founder. Thank you, right, Kathy. Come on. You're very welcome. Can, you can't touch me. You can't oh, touch me. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, that will trigger me. <laughs> <laughs> I Thanks for joining us here on the Real Estate House Party. This has been a true pleasure. The couple legends. Thanks again, Lenny Clark. Thank Kathy Holtz, Alza. Anything for you, Ricky. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.